rushes for the 37-yard touchdown. Washington leads 34-16 at that point. All right, Cowboys trailing 34-16 up next. This is the first play of their next possession. First and 10, Andy Dalton quickly pressured here, tries to find Zeke. Instead, he's picked by Montez Sweat, who runs it back for the 15-yard touchdown. Washington wins it 41-16 to is our final score. Alex Biss, 19 of 26 for 149 yards. After the game, Mike McCarthy talking about that questionable big punt play call. Well, I mean, it's definitely a, a big play opportunity the way you view it. There's, there's, there's certain um, things you look for tendency-wise on, on when and where. Um, you know, but, you know, it's uh, obviously we didn't execute it and, and – and as those things go, I mean, when, obviously it's ultimately my responsibility when particularly a play like that doesn't doesn't work. But uh, we're trying to generate a big play um, at that point in the game. Um, prior, you know, the information that you look for going into it, it, it was a solid call. Mike, what has the last couple 24 to 48 hours been like for this team? I mean, it's, I think stating obvious, uh, extremely difficult. I mean, um, obviously with the passing of Marcus Paul, I mean, it was, you know, a lot of heavy hearts, but I, I can't um, say enough about our football team, about our players, uh, the way they came out, started the game, and, um, you know, we had a number of adverse things to deal with throughout the game. Uh, we just, you know, we didn't get it going to, the, the, to where we wanted to get it going in the second half, but... Um, uh, you find out a lot about uh, people in these times, and uh, I can't tell you how proud I am as this football team. Uh, but yes, it's 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 a week that uh, I don't think any of us will ever forget. Mike, can you also talk that there was that point in the uh, late in the first half where you had the fourth and one, a uh, little bit less than fourth and one, and, and the call there to, to throw the ball downfield and what happened? Oh, it was a clean matchup. Uh, obviously, had one on one on the perimeter, and uh, you know, obviously the result wasn't what we were looking for. I, I think everybody's seen what happened on the play, uh, but it's you know it's uh, those those are plays that you you look to create opportunities, and uh, it was a, it was a good play call, and you know we had one on one on the outside, and uh, we just didn't convert. All right, Michael Robinson and David Carr back with me. I mean, we're listening pretty intently to Mike McCarthy here, guys. Obviously, losing those two starting tackles. Out the gate, really, in the first quarter there. Very, very tough for Dallas to recover. But there were a lot of other things that went wrong. Uh, David, what did you really glean from what we saw from Dallas in this game? Well, there's certain situations that stand out in every game and the reasons why you lose football games. And you have a fourth and inches, you end up trying to throw the football. That, obviously, it could have been a quarterback sneak. Could have found a, a way to get that. You throw a 10-yard pass to CeeDee Lamb. You know, a young wide receiver who, man, God bless him, loved to throw that pass, but maybe not in that situation. The fake punt, if it works, obviously yeah, everybody loves the fake punt, but I mean, right here, you need it less than a foot. So, I mean, that's that's a tough one to swallow for me. Um, CD ended up dropping the ball later to tie the game. And then, and then you go fake punt and maybe it works. You, you go for the Philly Philly, which you're actually a cowboy. So how does that work? You can't run the Philly Philly if you're a cowboy. We've seen teams try that. It's, it, there's a lot of questionable things that, that happened here. And I, I will say this though, I know Marcus Paul. I knew Marcus Paul when I was with the Giants. He was an assistant strength coach there. Marcus Paul is one of the best human beings I've ever been around in a football locker room. So I can't imagine how difficult that is for the Cowboys to, to be able to physically and emotionally go out there and try to play that game. That's extremely difficult. But but you kind of you, you go over the top of that when you start doing things that just make it even more difficult for your football team. And that's where you almost say, coach, you got to help me out. And this situation, I don't know if the coaching staff helped those guys out. Yeah, David. I mean, a lot of things that this team is is going through. Obviously, the death of their strength and conditioning coach. A uh, long week. The, the 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 they lost their franchise quarterback early in the season. Uh, they're not winning, and everybody expected Dallas to win this year. So, of course, this team is dealing with dealing with a lot. But when I look at the team and take an honest assessment of it, none of the players truly take ownership uh, um, of their jobs and of the football team. See, all of the great teams, um, whether you're winning a championship whether you're going deep in the playoffs they take ownership of the team 
you can't just make the excuse that, oh, well, the coach's scheme doesn't work or, you know, and finger point. That's that's what it could have should have type of football. And that's what losers do. So when you look at this football game, David, you talk about throwing the football on fourth and one. You talk about faking a punt um, in a critical situation of a game. What do you expect, man? The Dallas Cowboys aren't good this year. So the coaches have to do something outside of the box to try to get to try to generate something fourth and one ordinarily we would have expected them to just line up behind that big offensive line give it to one of the highest paid running backs in the national football league and getting a yard is easy but now that offensive line isn't assembled that, that that way anymore there's a lot of injuries and ezekiel elliott can't hold on to the football so you know what you do you go to your strength your strength is on the outside and they just didn't make a play so when i look at the dallas cowboys team they're just upside down they're just they're just not very good right now and again they still have a chance even with all that i just said they still have a chance to win the nfc east it's insane you guys you can say all of these things and yet and still there is a potential <laughs> possibility still. here where they could really pull it out i love the part of the account accountability m rob because truly as we've said before in this show the nfl does not care of course not to say we don't feel for folks in some definitely in a 2020 season like this one but once you get out on the field it does not matter all right m rob david thanks let's get you to our first game of thanksgiving day texans at lions detroit trying to bounce back from last week's shutout loss mm, first quarter lions ball with seven nothing lead first and 10 Matthew Stafford chucks it nope intercepted by JJ Watt 19 yards for the touchdown for JJ a couple of folks were talking smack on him he says happy Thanksgiving instead fourth quarter Texans ball leading 34 17 time for some trickery Deshaun Watson hands it to Duke sends it right back to him and he launches it to a wide open Will Fuller 34 yards for the touchdown Texans win 41 25 everyone celebrating except for me I left Fuller on the bench this week. Here's Watson. When I called the play, Duke looked at me and was like, hey, if we got pressure, you know, I, I'm going to keep it. You know, I'm not going to pitch it back. So that's why he kind of carried the ball a little bit longer than, than what he's supposed to. And when he kept it, I just called him. I was like, hey, Duke, Duke. And I was yelling his name. And he just turned around and threw it back to me. And I grabbed it and I seen Will naked. So I got it to Will. And that's how it really happened. So he was really keeping it because that's what he, that was the plan. If pressure, you know, keep it. But I called his name and he trusted me and, and pitched it back. And I just grabbed it and launched it. I don't know the name of the play. He just told me that he was running, wanted to run a flea flicker. And I said, okay, let's.